Well, today we're going to talk about data and how to use it inside of reports. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, so the main idea here is that we want to take a look at. Let me wait till, wait till my slide catches up so everyone can see it. We want to take a look at your data and how to shape it in preparation for your reports. So we're going to look into data and how to shape it. Uh, the first part we're going to talk about is from flat to fat. That's a P-H-A-T fat. Is that too old school, Amanda? Do they not say that anymore? Are the hip kids don't say P-H-A-T fat anymore? <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Well, you know what? I think it might be coming back. So you're right oh, on the right. beginning of a new trend. Uh, let's, start a, let's start a trend, right? Let's start a trend. So from flat to fat, meaning you have flat data, but we want to make it hierarchical. We want to look at data in a more structured approach. For example, in the reports, we call it a banded approach. You can totally do that. We're going to talk about that. Parameters are also data, which is interesting because you can use it to not only show stuff on your report. For example, say you want a dynamic header or a dynamic footer that you want to type in. You can use a parameter to do that. And also you can, you can use a parameter to shape the data further, either on the client side with reports or on the server side with the data that goes into the report. Then we're going to talk about the field list, in particular how to shape the data in the field list. For example, we have this thing, excuse me, called the data source schema. And then this other thing called the binding source. They're different things. However, the mantra I, that I have always given you is we don't care what your data provider is, and I'll show you how to use both of these in a, in a data agnostic way. And then if we have time, we're going to start to do some projections using link to show you how to take data that's in one shape and put it in another shape. Okay, and that's, uh, that's what we're going to do, and that's, I think that's all the slides I have. So uh, let's make some code. As always, I'll show my last slide first if you want to get my information. My name is Seth Juarez. If you want to get a hold of me on Twitter, it's at Seth Juarez or SethJ at DevExpress.com. So uh, with that, let's, uh, let me just close this and let's get right into some code here. So let me close this and let me just start a new instance of Visual Studio. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to create a brand new uh, project. So let's just do that. And again, my presentations are a little bit different because I like to code stuff, you know, raw in front of you so you can see uh, how it is that I think about code and also so you can see, look, I make mistakes too. And, that, and that's okay. So let's go to Blank Solutions and let's call this our Shaping Data Solution. Now what I'm doing is I'm adding a blank solution so that I can create a class library for the report. So let's go to Windows here and let's do class library and let's call this reports. Okay. So uh, this again is a class library and the reason why I like to do class libraries is because it makes it so that I can separate the reports from the actual presentation, right? And so if we take a look at the class library here, let's pretend this is the reports, this is the data right here, <clears throat> and then this would be your presentation. So the idea is we want to be able to swap this out whenever we want. And so, and then also swap this out whenever we want. So we like to separate this and put it in its own class library. And so this guy can hook up to the data, the data come back, and then the report can be sent over to whatever presentation layer we want and then send data back in the form of parameters. So this is the reason why I do a class library. And I don't know if I've explained that enough. So let's go ahead and add a new item. And this, uh, no, in fact, let me add a database. So let me go ahead and say add existing item. And in the DevExpress folders, for me it's under Users Public Documents DevExpress Demos. If you go to Components and then go to Data, there is this fancy Northwind database. So we're going to say nwind.mdb, and I am going to hit Add. All right. So the first thing it's going to ask you to do is create a data set. Now, as we go along, I'm going to start to change the data providers, and, and everything's going to sort of evolve and morph into what, what I'm going to show you about shaping data. But first, we're going to start out with a data set. And the reason why I use Access is because when folks ask me for the code, I can send them the whole thing and they can have everything ready to go. So let's hit Next on the data set. 
Oh, and also the, the other secret is that my SQL server instance is host. I broke it, so that's the other reason. why. So let's go to Northwind. We're just going to use the invoice uh, table because it has some really interesting data that's flat, uh, but that can be grouped, so I'll hit finish here. And so everything will get built up. So as we go to the Northwood database, you can or the Northwood data set, you can see we have this really, really flat data that we're going to start to work with that uh, involves invoices. Okay? So let's bring this up and let's add a new report. So we're going to add a new item. And let me wait till the screen catches up. And we're going to go to reporting. And I'm going to add X report class. So you guys see this, the 11.2 stuff is on the cusp, I think, and so I'm already starting to play with it. I'm pretty excited. So we're going to go invoice report, and I am going to hit add. All right, so it's going to load up all the goodness over here that we're used to, and then it's going to create the designer for the report. Uh, here's the report. So let me close that, and let me make sure these guys are all over here. Okay, so we have the report that we've set up, and what I'm going to do is I am going to use the data source, Northwind data source, use the data member as invoices, and then the invoice table adapter is going to be used. You're going to see the field list over here is going to be set up really cool, and so we're going to start to drop some stuff on there. So let's, let's go ahead and choose salesperson. Uh, product name, I think that's good. Uh, and let's see, co the company name. So this is the sale. This is the person that sold the item. This is the customer that purchased it, and this is the product that they purchased. So if we do a quick look at this, and I scroll everything up, move everything over, and put this up, put this guy up right here. Then we're going to start to see the data that we want. Now the reason why this preview button works is because the table adapter has an understanding of how to fetch data. We're going to see two other instances today where that is not the case. Okay, So let's go to preview. <clears throat> and notice that we have all of the data that we want. Okay, so notice that we have some repetition, right? And what we want to do is we want to make it so that we have a master detail kind of report. But again, the data is flat. So how do we start shaping it on the report side? So again, remember, this webinar is separating stuff into how to shape stuff with reports or how to shape stuff before you send it over to reports. And that's those are the two things that we're going to be talking about. So uh, there it is. So let's talk a little bit about how to fix this. Now, there is an interesting little menu item here that is always there when you're looking at reports. Whenever you want to do reports, you can go to that menu item right there. And as we look at it, you're going to see that there is this interesting thing called group and sort. The field list is just the field list. You can see that over here. The report explorer is a thing I just closed that looks at the hierarchy of the report so you can move stuff around. The script errors are the errors that happen when you do scripts, and we'll leave that for a different webinar. And finally, the one that we're going to look at today is the group and sort. Let me take this down and move it right here. Okay, so we have this uh, group and sort window, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a group, and I'm going to add a group by salesperson. Notice what it does when you do that. It adds this group header. So let's go to preview. And notice that it really didn't change anything. But when I go and move the salesperson to the group header instead of in the detail and hit preview, notice what it does. It groups all of a sudden all of the salespersons first, and then it goes through and does the other items. We can continue to do that. So let's add another group. And the group is going to be, obviously, customer's uh, company name. So now what I need to do is move this guy up, like so, and then move this up. And then again, you're going to see this sort of interesting uh, dichot a sort of master detail. In essence, what the report is doing is it's aggregating 
the stuff that we're grouping by. And as we create a subgroup, notice that it aggregates further by that. So let's, uh, let's do a little design here. And let me put the group and sort stuff. I'll put it to the side there. Well, let me, let me just close it and we can look at it a little bit later. So what we're going to do is now let's stylize this a little bit to show you how styles work. Remember, when it comes to reports, the XR control is king and any XR control style is automatically passed down to its children unless otherwise specified. So when I change the font of the report to Verdana 12, notice that it also changes there. A little too big, I think. So let me go to the report again and let's change it to a 10. Let's do 11. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is let's talk about this, this notion of a bookmark. Let's add a bookmark for a salesperson and show you how that works. So what you do is you go to the label. and Let's change the label name to something interesting. Uh, sales person. Okay. And let's go to data bindings. And we have this thing called a bookmark. And this is what allows you to create those fancy sort of navigation tools on the side. So let's set the book binding to invoices and salesperson. Okay, let me let the screen catch up. There's a little bit of a delay on the screen, and I apologize if it feels like I'm going faster than what's going on. So notice what happens when I set the bookmark. So uh, you can actually scroll through it and, and look at the report however you like. Now let's add another bookmark for uh, company name. So let's change this label to label company. And let's set the binding here to invoices customers.company name. Now, when I hit preview, look what happens. Notice that it, it, it does this, this uh, non-hierarchical display of information. And we want, we want Andrew Fuller to show that these are the customers that he sold to. So let's go over to the designer and let's talk about this thing called the bookmark parent. Now what the bookmark parent does is it allows you to say which is the parent control of this bookmark. So notice that we're saying the salesperson is the parent of the customer's company name. So when I go back, then we get this wonderful approach to, to data. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me save this. Let me go back to the designer. And we have this report, fairly boring, but again, the idea is that we're trying to shape our data on the reporting side, which I think is very, very important. Okay, let's go to the group and sort, and let's move this up. Uh-oh. So what I did now is I changed the grouping to company name first and then salesperson. So let me, let me put this back over to this, oh, I don't like the way that looks. Let me put it right here. Now notice that when we go to the invoice report, there's this weird little, whoops. Uh, so let's just shift things over, like so, and like so. And now when we go to preview, the preview is great. But look at the, you see how there's a little bit of a, of a problem with the document map? That's because we need to change the bookmark parent. Notice this guy no longer has a parent. But this guy is now the sub of the company. So when I go back, you can see the company and the products that were sold by a salesperson. So we have salesperson here and company here. You know, let me show you an interesting thing that you can do. Uh, the format string is, again, if you use system, uh, I think it's string.format, there is this really cool thing that you can do. So I can say salesperson. A colon and then this zero thing, right? That's saying when you when you do the binding, put the data in there. So I'll hit this, and notice that when I, when I go to salesperson, notice that we've done an additional thing for shaping data, and let's do this the same thing over here. Let's go to the format string and let's say company, and then zero. There we go. Let's go to preview, and now we have this stuff going on. So notice that we've done a couple of things. The first thing we've done is we've done a group by, and we've done multiple levels of group by. The next thing we can do is we can add sorting. And let's do a sorting by product name. So now when we sort by product name, notice that it lives in the appropriate hierarchy. And when I go to preview, we have the alphabetized list of the products. 
Now, let's talk a little bit about how we do uh, some, uh, we, we want to do some functions on this data. So let's, let's go ahead and insert a group header. I'm sorry, I didn't mean group header, I meant group footer. Insert group footer. And now let's take this guy, copy him, and move him over there. Now we're going to do some summary stuff. And let, let, let's look at the numbers that you're going to see. So let's go to the summary and let's do a sum. Oh, no, sorry, let's do a count of the product. So let's hit OK and let's hit preview. Well, no, let's, let's uh, change the format string to count. By the way, did I set this to sum? So we want sum and we want to do by, let's do by group. Okay. And the format string we're going to say is count is, oh, let's do total. So total colon zero. Okay. So there we go. So we're doing a group count total. And now I can say, look at this. Each of, there's, there's three products here, three products there, uh, and so on and so forth. And then you can start to style this guy independently of everything else. So let's set this guy to bold. And then we have this going on right here. So notice I haven't really done very much, but what I have done is I've taken some data that was flat and I've made it a little bit more interesting. Let's talk about parameters here for a second. Let's go to the field list. Finally, are there any questions about, about what I've done so far? If there are, feel free to type them into the question box. Uh, Hopefully it's making sense. If you if you haven't used these these features, they're really quite they're really good good features to use when you have flat data because you you, you get this sense of your data right away. And so let me let me uh, change the text alignment of this to bottom right, and now you can see we have this going on total. Okay, very good. And then we have a document map going on over here. Okay. Let me change this back to uh, salesperson company name. Let me go like this. Move this over here. Let's change the bookmark parent. Let's change the bookmark parent of this guy to nothing, and let's change this to back to salesperson. So we're back to where we were before: salesperson and the company they sold to. Oh, notice we lost something though, and we'll have to we'll have to put that back because the group footer switched. So let me delete that and let me add the group footer again. And let's copy this over here. And boy, this is this is really easy to do. Uh, and we're gonna say total zero. And we're gonna say by group. Okay. There you go. We're back to back to what we had before. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about parameters and how to use them it's as data for two purposes. One, to show things, and two, to actually do some filtering. All right, before I go there, Amanda, are there any questions? Uh, yes, there is a question. Is there a way to show conditional summary? Now, I'm not sure what they mean by conditional summary. That, that does not... Uh, so let me show you what is here. Maybe they can clarify what they mean by that. So we can do ignore null values. We have uh, running sum, count, average, and group. Also, we have this group thing. Now, if you want to do something like super crazy, like that no one's done, you can always do this before print event and do any kind of aggregation that you want, right? And, and you can do this, and, and then you can, you can put whatever you want. So you can say, for example, sender as XR label uh, dot text equals, um, I don't know, uh, plus other stuff, right? And, and, and what you can do is you can say if, uh, for example, let's do this. Well, I know what I'll do. Let, let's, if there's, a, if there's a something greater in there. So let's do sender as text, and let me, let me change this, this, this format string to, to have just the value that we want. Uh, so no format string. Let's hit OK. And let's make sure that the preview is working. Yes, so there's a number there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here uh, here and cast it as an integer. Let's see. So there's some text in there. Let's see if we can make it an integer. 
Oh, I know what it is. We're going to say int dot parse is greater than one. Then we can say sender as label equals uh, text, and we'll just say lots of uh, products, right? And then we can say else total plus. Right, so notice what I've done is I've done some conditional formatting kind of. So let me do let me look at the report again here. Let me go to preview and notice that uh oh, this will actually only happen when we run it in the report. So I'll I'll leave that in there and then we can look at this when we actually render the report to the form. Did he, is there any updates on the question, Amanda? And I'll make sure to leave this code in there so we can remember this is what happened. Yeah, Seth, he says uh specify a criteria so that the sum is counted for only some of the objects um, to show all the records in a list but calculate some of only odd ones for example. Oh good question yeah what, what I would do is I would get the this is what I would do I would take the detail band and get the before print event on there and do my own counts and then when this guy printed then I would show that so Again, you take the before print event here, you count all of the items however you want to count them. You know, if i mod 2 equals 0, plus plus, uh, uh, count plus plus, and then just show that value there. I kind of did something like that, but I didn't do a running count. So no, th th there's no way to do that in the UI, but there's definitely a way to do that in code. So hopefully that answers that question. I'll leave this here so that we can see this later uh, working. Okay. Alrighty, so we got this going. Uh, we're talking now parameters, so let's go to the field list and let's add a parameter. So let me add a parameter and let's just call this parameter the title. And we're going to say that this is of type string. Great. So everything's in there. Let's say we wanted to have a special title for our report. So I'm going to drag this over and I am going to make this big like so. You know what, now let me add a report header and let's put that in there because that's where that kind of thing would go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to format this a little bit different. I'm going to say our report or invoice report invoice report dash zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the style of it just a little bit so we get this this sort of uh, sense that it's a, it's a real uh, title. So we're going to add a style here. I'm going to call it the title style. Okay, and then we're going to make it some big, all sorts of big fonts here. So we'll do 20 bold on Verdana. Okay. Oh, that's too big. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's go to 14. Okay. Let's set the back color to something not so obtrusive. And then let's go to the text alignment and set it to the middle. Okay, so let's go to preview. Notice it's going to ask for the title, invoice report, annual, and let's hit submit. Notice what we've done is we've taken something that's usually not considered a piece of data, and we've used it to render things onto the report. Uh, oh, sorry, P.S. I'm female, uh, Christy. Sorry, I I always say this guy on the label, so. These labels also might be female, Amanda. I want to throw that out as well. So, she's not listening. I made a joke. Every once in a while, Amanda like <laughs> leaves her desk because this stuff, like she has like blood shooting out of her eyes because it's so boring to her. I think this is cool stuff, Amanda. Okay. I, I got the joke. Right. Sure. But anyways, again, what we're using is we're using a parameter as data to put into our report. You can totally do that. So say, for example, we want a quarterly. Quarterly, and then we hit submit. Notice we have that. Or we can put uh, Amanda loves data. And we have a report that says invoice report Amanda loves data, right? So this is, this is some cool stuff. Uh, we're using parameters, again, as data. And the cool thing about that is you can have an unlimited number of parameters that you can pass in. And it can be a number, it can be it can be whatever you want, 
And the cool thing about it is that you can use these to either change the shape of your data or to show uh, the data that you want. Okay, so let's do let's do something interesting, and let's let's use some some parameters to filter data. So we're going to add parameter, and let's do it by salesperson. So sales person, and we're going to make it a string. And so there's two types of filtering that we can do. The first type is on the client side, client side, meaning the reports does it, the report does the work, or we can do server side, which means the server does the work. And we're going to do both so that you can see uh, that indeed you can, you can do both. Okay, so let's go to the parameter itself. We've got it there, salesperson. Let's go to this handy dandy filter string doohickey. And this thing is what allows us to do the client side filtering. So let's go to the filter string. Let's go to the plus, And let's go to salesperson. Boom. Begins with, and now we have a couple of options. We can compare it with a field. Uh, we can compare it with a value that we just type in. We can compare it with another field, which is an interesting approach. Or we can compare it to a parameter. So notice we have two parameters. We're going to do salesperson and hit OK. All right, so the filter string is any salesperson that starts with the parameter that we pass in. So let's go to preview and let's go to a filter by salesperson. And we're going to, st everyone that's name starts with an S. So let's hit submit. Notice that there's only one that starts with, with an S and we have that. So let's let's do something a little a little cooler, right? Because we want to we want to we want to show first of all that I can spell, and second of all, second of all that we can use the parameter to also do something to the title. So let's go to salesperson here. Uh, let's do this right here. Let's go to the style, and let's go to remember. There's only one style that we that we want title style. And let's go here and say filter by, and then to do this zero thing. Okay. All right. So let's go to preview, and let's go to uh, a filter report, and let's go over here and type in S again. Notice that what we've done is we've created this this report that filters data by the salesperson. Let's do I don't know a T. Oh, we don't have any. Let's do an A. There you go. Andrew Fuller and Ann Dodsworth. All right. These are all the companies they've sold to. These are what they've sold. And notice that we have an invoice report, filtered report, filtered by A. All right. I see there's a question, Amanda. What do we got? Uh, let's see. Is there a way to drill down from a report back to a data record in a Windows form. For example, click on a customer name and bring up the customer's live data record. Oh my goodness, what an excellent question. Absolutely. I'll tell you I'll tell you the short version and then if you want the long version, I'm happy to help out, you know, we can do a pair programming or something. All you really need to do is handle the preview click event, right? Or preview double click. You can do this on you can even do this on a Silverlight uh, application, and I have examples of how to do that if you want to see it on Silverlight. But when you click it, there's some code that you can do to shoot an event. Now, what I would do is I would I would bubble the event up, right? Because the idea is that we want this to be independent uh, or agnostic to provider, and so since it's on its own class or library, I would bubble the event up. But here's the you want to see the dirty secret on how to make it look. Let me change the four color to uh, this, and let me change this to change the size. Doesn't that look like a link? Yeah. The other thing you can do is to make to make it behave like a link. You can handle the uh, preview mouse move, and if it's over it, you can say cursor dot hand, right? So the cursor is a cursor dot hand. So hopefully that that helps. So I do a lot of stuff like this. I'll leave this like that. But again, if you want the hand to show up, you just do the cursor dot hand. And I'm going to take the title. Uh, 
But see, notice you do the cursor hand, and the hand comes out. When they click it, the event is clicked, and then you can load all sorts of goodness. So, so yes, good question. All right. Any other questions, Amanda, while I'm, while I'm taking them? Yes. Uh, can these reports be deployed to SSRS? Great question. The answer is no. And the reason why is that SSRS sort of forces you or pigeonholes you into using SQL Server as the only data access provider. And the stuff I'm going to show you in the next 30 minutes is going to make your brain explode. <laughs> Right, because the idea is we don't want you to be pigeonholed into a certain set of data constraints. And you're going to see the stuff that I'm going to do now, it's not possible to do with SSRS. And if it is, I, I don't know of a way to do it. So the idea is we want to not necessarily, well, we want to divorce the actual report itself from the data. And I'm going to show you how you can literally change data to look like the data the report expects and it, everything is still happy. Right? And that's... So that's a really good, uh, a really good question. Any other questions? Yes. Can you do an index in the preview? I am not sure what they mean by that. So why don't you? I, I'm not sure. What if you could clarify a little bit? I'm, I'm happy to answer that one. Any other questions, Amanda? Uh, yeah, one more. Um, this the feature of filtering. Is it possible to do in a web environment? Absolutely. In fact, the idea is that the report is agnostic to the presentation layer that you put it on. In fact, I think I have a. And if I don't have a sample, I should get one where we use this very report to actually, or not this very report, but a report similar to this to use the client side filter string. But let me let me show you something a little better, right? Because we want to start to look at. Uh, let's filter on the server side because who wants to do that on the client side, right? So let me. Here's a little. Here's a little blog post I did, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put this into the the chat uh, window so you can get it. Uh, this there was a client that said, well, I want to filter on the client on the server side because it's foolish to bring all the data over. I agree. Let me show you how to do that really quickly. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we take off the adapter and then we're going to take off the filter string. And the reason why I do that is so that you can see, well, I'm, I'm also going to take this off, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that we don't have more than one parameter to fill out because that's getting annoying. And let me go down to the field list, and let's take out the title parameter. So we'll do a delete on that. And then now we have salesperson. So the idea is, notice that when I go to preview and I do salesperson with an A and hit submit, well, it still loads it up because it's still using the data set and the data adapter. But what we're going to do is we're going to change that. We're going to take the adapter off like we did before. And what I'm going to do is I am going to make it so that it loads from the server side. And in order to do that, we need to do a little bit of work on the data set. right? Because the idea is that we want the invoices table adapter to do a filtering on the was it salesperson. Yes on the salesperson. So let's go over to the Northwind and let's go to the data set and let's go to add query. So we'll use select and we'll use select and that's all good. And I'm going to say where, what was it? Customers, uh, no, what are we doing? Are we doing salesperson? Let's, yep, salesperson. And I'm gonna do a query, a like query, like question mark plus and so what is this doing? This is saying, I don't know what this is. This has to be passed in. This is saying any string that I pass in, we're going to append a wild card so that it does a starts with. Right? So let's hit next. And we're going to say fills by sales person. And here we're going to say get data by sales person. Next. Finish. So now we have this extra table, uh, uh, table adapter. Let me rebuild. And let's go to the invoice report. Now, on the report, there is a special event. And that event is this one right here, parameter request submit. So let's go to the this event, and let's click it. And let's do this. We'll say if parameters. Wait, let me hit dot and let's see if it's there. I, I don't think it's there. So parameters dot, I think it was salesperson. 
dot value does not equal null, then we'll do something. Now let's double check and make sure that that is the name of the field. So let's go to the field list. It is salesperson. Let me copy it to make sure. Salesperson, very good. And let's make sure that we introduce a constant. Very good. Uh, let me let me rename that. I don't like that. I'm gonna go old school and say sales. I'm gonna do the old school like Oracle stuff. Very good. So now we've done that. And incidentally, if you don't know what that did, I notice it created a const string. Yeah, so that we don't have to worry about it. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill the data the data set. So we're gonna say invoice table adapter dot fill by salesperson and notice it takes a data table and a salesperson so the data table we're going to put in there is going to be northwind1.invoices and the data we're going to take is parameters salesperson.value.toString boom and we are ready to go okay so there we go. Notice that what we've done is we've changed the report so that it actually pulls the data. Notice we don't have a filter string anymore, so it's not filtering by that. So if I go to preview, it should work. Cross your fingers and say A and submit. Notice that there's a, there's a little bit of a problem here because it doesn't know how to act without a table adapter. So now it's time to start adding a presentation layer. So let's go to new project and let's add a Windows form and we'll call it the WinViewer. And we'll set this as the startup project. And on the form one, we're going to go to the toolbox. And we're going to add a simple button. There, it's going to, look, it's going to do all of the goodness there. The other thing we need to do is we need to make sure we add a reference to the project itself. Very good. And the other thing that's important is we need to make sure that it has all the ref assemblies prepared for the report itself. And so in order to do that, I'm just going to cheat and I'm going to say new item and I'm going to say we're going to add a report class. Uh, any questions, Amanda, as this is loading up? Hey, Seth, yes. Um, hi, Seth. I use a BBS to access my data and would like to see if you are able to preview the report in the designer instead of compiling and running the report to preview. Oh, yeah. There is a way to do that. I, I'm, why, don't you, why don't we do this? Send me an email. and I'd like to see your particular situation because there's a way to do that in the end user report designer. There's probably not a way to do that inside of Visual Studio. And the reason why is because the table adapter itself has all of the information necessary to actually pull the data out of the database. But maybe your particular situation is different, so please do send me an email. Any other questions, Amanda? Uh, yeah, can I change the data source slash connection by code? Oh yeah, absolutely. What you can do is notice that, for example, if you want to, if you want to change it inside of the connection string, you can certainly do that. There it is. Or what you can do is when this uh, data set loads up, when you create a new one, you can pass that data set into the data source of the report. I'll show you a little bit how that kind of works. Uh, but yeah, you can totally change that. So let's load an invoice report here real quick. Very good. Report equals new report, invoice report. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say report dot show preview dialog okay f5 this this guy let's hit the button and notice it's asking me for a salesperson remember I think the one we had success with was the a salesperson so let's hit submit uh oh uh oh this is starting to do this uh oh I think I got the wrong XR label all right, so let's go back to remember. Remember, I told you that this would actually, this would actually uh, work when we start the presentation stuff. So let's hit stop. So let me shift F10. No, sorry, Control F10. And let's close this here. Let's close this here. And let me make sure that I have the right data in here. So this is a uh, XR label one. 
yeah, XR label one. Did I get that right? So XR label one, XR label one. Well, I, let me let me take this out. I I should be this. The right thing to do is actually maintain counts. So I could I could do. I could do other things, but let me just take this out for now. The, the problem is that the label that I'm, the sender is not the same label that I'm, I'm trying to capture. So I'll just leave that blank for now, but we can totally get back to that because I don't want to run out of time and I want to show you some other stuff. So the problem is the label is not the same as the one that's being shown. So let's hit submit and notice that everything is working as I had said before. Right. So now we're getting server-side filtering on the data with the parameters. Okay. So there you go. Okay, now, uh, any questions before we move along to the next part? Because the next part's a little interesting, and I'm going to do some crazy stuff. Um, there's no questions, but yeah, I guess we the stream is a little bit slow. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, let me, let me slow down a little bit. Uh, Ian and Eddie, I'll make sure to slow down a little bit. Hopefully, is the stream, is it slow for you, Amanda? I, I didn't notice. What what screen are you? Are you still in code here? Yes. Okay. Okay. So hopefully the recording will be a little bit better. All right. So let me, uh, let's talk a little bit about what if we don't have the data source a priori, like we don't have the real data. How do we make it so that we can still design reports without data? So there's two ways to do it. The first way is using the, I think it's called the, data source schema, and the second is the binding source. These two are very different, uh, but they allow you to do the same kinds of things. And I'll show you how you can actually use both interchangeably, kind of. Uh, so let me, let me show you how that works. So let's go to the, well, let me, let me load up the report and make sure that that's the name of the property here. So we're, we're on the report here, and let's go to, there it is, data source schema. That, that's the thing we want to do. And let's let's make so we're going to make one, and I'll show you how to do that, and why you would do that, and how you could actually use any kind of data to to use it. Okay. Okay. So let's go to uh, let's make a new report. Looks like I lost the the uh, looks like I lost the project window. That stinks. Oh, where is it? Server no solution explorer. There we go. And let's put that at the top. Very good. So let's add a new report. And we're going to say new item, and we're going to say extra report, and we're going to say uh, custom invoice, invoice report. So now let's pretend we don't have the data source ready of it, readily available, but we do at least know the shape of the data. What's important is we know the shape of the data. Let's define the data and provide the data source schema. So how do we do that? Let me, let me show you an easy way to do that. So I'm going to hit add new item, and we're going to go to code. No, let's go to data. And we're going to go to an XML schema file, and we're going to call this our new invoice. Let's just call it invoice data, invoice data. Now, again, hopefully this isn't too scary, uh, but we're actually going to, we're going to write some XSD stuff on the fly. So let's go there and let's go to uh, view code and we're going to create some schema stuff. So I'm going to say XS and I'm going to say element. Oh, sorry. XS element and the name is going to be, uh, we'll do lowercase stuff, invoice. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say this is actually a complex type. Right, because uh, and if you haven't looked at XSD and how to define stuff in XSD, imagine it's just like a, a database schema but in XML. Okay, so now we're going to say XS and then we're going to say a sequence because that's what we've got. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say XS uh, element uh, name equals I don't know ID and type equals XS integer. And there we go. Now let's do a couple more. We're going to say customer, uh, customer, and this is going to be obviously a string, and then we're going to say product, and we're going to say salesperson, and let's add another one for price. 
Oops, caps lock. Okay, so let's change these guys to what they need to be, or gals, because they could be either. And we're going to say string here. String, string, and then this could be a decimal. Okay, so let's go back to the XSD. We should be able to see in the schema explorer that now we have this invoice with these items here. So let's go back and let me explain this just, just, just to, uh, for a second. What I've done is I said there's an element that we define. So XSD is a definition for how the structure of an XML document looks like. Imagine it being a contract. So if you take this XSD, you could use it to validate XML. Uh, and so the idea is that we have this element invoice that happens to be a complex type that is a sequence of elements. And that's it. So you see that when we, when we define this, I literally just type this stuff in. And it's not, it's not super hard. I mean, you can totally look this up and do other stuff. I'm happy to maybe do a tutorial on XSDs, but the idea is that we want to use this to, you, to view the field list. So let's go to the field list and let's put this here. Notice that we don't have anything in the field list but we don't have a database. Let's pretend we don't have a database. So let's let's go ahead and change the data source schema. Well, first off, let me let me go to open containing folder so I can get the where this stuff is at. So I just copied that. Now I'm at the report again, and I'm going to go to this thing called. Uh, oh shoot! I have to go to the report. Sorry, I have to go to something called data source schema. So it's going to ask me for a file. Right. Also, you could use a class. Right. To if you use a Visual Studio class, it create an XSD schema for you. I wanted to. I don't know. I like doing stuff the hard way. I guess sometimes you can define your own. Notice that we want an XSD schema file. We have two. I hit invoice data and hit OK. And notice that now our field list is populated with stuffs. And Notice there's no data source, there's no data member, but yet still we were able to say this report has this stuff. Sales, sales, it looks like salesperson is spelled wrong, but it's not. So now when we hit preview, the idea here is that, well, there's no data. No, there's not. But what we've been able to do is we've been able to project our own sort of data onto this. And we can go about and do everything we've done before, like the group and sort. We can do that. We can add a group. Notice that we can group by any one of these things, and so on and so forth. Now, how do we get data into that? Okay. So I am going to create an invoice class. Let me just rename this to invoice. Uh, and let's make sure that we have everything. We had an ID, right? We had a salesperson, right? We had a product. We had a, how do you do a decimal? I always forget how to do decimal. So A, and let's see, decimal, ADE. Okay, ADE. Uh, was it price? Am I missing anything? Let me go to the invoice data. ID, customer, product, salesperson, price. ID, customer, product, salesperson, price. A ID salesperson product. What am I what am I missing? I'm having like a brain conniption. You know what? I am just gonna open this side by side. So view code and we're gonna we're gonna put this guy or gal vertically. There we go. Now we can see it. So we have ID uh, customer product salesperson and price. Okay, so we've, we've set that up. Uh, we, don't, we don't need this, this guy anymore. And I am going to create a static method. So uh, a, a method, get data, and I'm going to return a invoice, invoice list. And the way you do that is return new invoice uh, like so. And then you get this right here, and you're going to say new invoice, and then pass stuff in. And we need a couple of those, right? So we're going to say ID equals one. We're going to say customer equals Seth. We're going to say pro, uh, uh, price equals twelve ninety five. Product equals deodorant. 
and salesperson equals Amanda. All right, so now we have two uh, things, new invoices here. We're going to say two, uh, Bob, Bob, uh, price is 295, 195, the product is soap, and we'll let Amanda be the salesperson again. Let's hit F6 and make sure this works. Uh-oh, no it doesn't, and that's because this is being cast as a double, so I'll put a little M there, and F6. Everything's good. So now we have this data going in there. Okay, so let's go to this uh, uh, form one, and now let's load up the, what did we call it? The custom invoice report. So I'll change that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something interesting, right? I'm going to pass the data source, data source equals, and I think it was invoice dot uh-oh, I did not make that public. Ah, there we go. Let's go back to the form view here. Invoice dot get data. And when we load it up, what you would expect to see is the actual invoice report. But there's nothing. And this is the difference that I want to talk about. It turns out that in order for the, the uh, data source schema to work, we have to use tables. Or the real, the real thing is data tables. Right? The binding source uses objects. And that's why it didn't work. Well, Seth, how do we make this work? Well, easy. Let's do a little math, an extension method to convert an object, uh, an object array or an object anything, an object list or anything, convert it over to a data table. So let's add a new class and let's call it extensions. And I'm going to make sure it's public and I'm going to make sure it's static and because I need to do an extension method and I'm going to create a static method. So we're going to say public static uh, data table to data table. And we're going to say this I enumerable of items. Well, how do we do that? Well, we have to create a data table. How do we do that? I'll show you. So we'll do data table, table equals new table. Uh, and I'm going to return the table. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to get the property. So we're going to say property info. Do a little reflection. Then I'm going to take these items and <laughs> and do this. I'm going to say Control C. I'm going to say for each of the var item in items, I'm going to make a data table. The first thing though is I have to make sure to create the columns. And also I need to say table dot begin load data because we're we're loading data into a table. And here we're going to say table dot oops table dot end load data okay so now I'm going to say this if properties properties equals null that means that we haven't set up the properties or the columns yet we're going to do this we're going to say properties equals item get type because right, we're going to get the type, and then we're only going to expose the properties. So we're going to say get properties. And what this is do is this this is going to do a list of property that we have, public properties that we have in this uh, whatever it is in this I enumerable. So I'm going to say for each property and properties, we're going to say table dot columns dot add, and we're going to say property and we're going to make the name out of it, and we're also going to get the property property type. See that? So this was, so far, it's nothing too complicated, right? All we're doing is we're saying for each of the items in whatever this I new rule, and notice an I new rule is pretty much anything that's, a, anything that's a list, right? We're going to say if the first one is, if, the, if for the first item, we're going to get all the properties out of it, and the reason why we want to do this only once 
And the, and the reason why we do it inside the floor of each service is because we, if there's no items, we don't want to even do this, right? Uh, so we do this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say var row equals table, oops, dot new row. And what this does is this creates a new row according to the schema. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to say for each property in that, we're going to say row property dot name equals property dot value property dot get value and we're going to pass in the item in null so notice that this is a property descriptor and what this is saying is this is getting the the actual property the reflection the reflected property out and saying hey for this property get the value out of this particular item we don't have to pass an indexer in there because it's not an index property. And now all we need to say is table dot rows dot add. And we're going to add the row. Oakley Doakley. So we've created a two data table extension method. So now all I need to do is say invoice dot get data dot two data table. And then we are done. There it is, right? And so what, what I've shown you is that, in essence, if you want to use the XML data source with objects, you can. It, it really does not, it does, oh, and sorry, I'm looking at the screen and I can tell it's like a little behind. The idea is that it doesn't matter the shape of the data. Here, let me, let me, show, let me do something even crazier. Are you ready for the craziness? I am going to take the uh, invoice Oh, where is this? Where's the class? There we go. I'm going to take this. Let's see, I'm going to put it over here in the uh, view code here. I'm going to say var items equals this. This should work. I don't. I don't know why this isn't tabbing over. So let me tab that over. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say items to, da to data table, and it should still work. And we haven't really changed it here, just move stuff around, right? So it should still work. Very good. Now let me show you something even crazy. We're going to create anonymous things. So as I'm going back, I am going to delete. Wow, that screen is lagging. I'm so sorry. So I'm going to delete these little properties here. I'm going to I'm going to load up this screen so that I can watch what you guys are watching. That way, I you're not getting closed on the audience view. Okay, so sorry about that. So notice what I've done is I've taken out any notion that we have with invoices. Now I'm going to run F5. I'm going to run it and see what happens. Ah, it still works. Let me do something even crazier, right? I'm going to create a new. Uh, I'm going to create some new code. I'm going to create a student class, and the reason why I'm doing a student class is because I already have some students that I can create, and 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 I'm not going to bore you with code, but let me. This is some stuff I borrowed from my machine learning presentation. Notice that I just have a class here. F6. Uh, we don't need this method. So notice we have name, grade, GPA, age, tall, good. We don't even need this. No, no, we don't need this. So uh, let's take this. Well, maybe I do need it. No, I don't. And let me go to uh, this uh, student data class that I have to load some students. Yes, I'll tab a five. Very good. So notice I have a bunch of students now that I've just filled out. And there's a student data class. So let's hit F6. Okay. Now, we're not going to change the report, but we're going to try to get it so that it shows students 
as customers. Okay, so let's go back to the student and let's uh, pin this vertically. Let me get this out of the way. Now we're getting to some real crazy data shaping, right? So notice they have friends. So let's let's do this. We're going to say, take this out, and I am going to say var students equals student data get data. Now let's use some link. Var q equals from s in students select new. Now remember, remember what we had before. We need to go back to that because I, I'm gonna I'm gonna forget what the what the properties are, but we have we have these now. I'll put this over here so we can see it. We need to select new these. I'm gonna say ID equals s dot friends, right? Because it matches. Now what are we gonna do? We're gonna say customer equals s dot name. Product. I don't know what I'm gonna do with product. So product. Uh, no, sorry. Product equals s dot. I don't know. Let's do grade dot to string because it's a string. So I need to I need to start breaking these up because it's starting to get a little a little crazy. Okay. Uh, let me hit a colon there. Now what else do we have? We have salesperson salesperson equals uh, s dot what, what else do we got uh, tall dot to string and we're gonna say price equals s dot gpa as a decimal okay now let's take this q and let's put it in here Let's see what happens. Cross our fingers. I haven't tried this yet. So we hit the simple button. Ah, look at that. Notice what we've done is we've taken something that isn't a that isn't an invoice, right? It's it's not anything even close to an invoice. And let me let me move this over so we can start to see the code. Uh, something that's not even an invoice. And we've made a projection to map on to the schema of the data that we wanted to set up, and we've cast it to a data table. Now we're running out of time. Uh, so let me just explain what I wanted to do after this. We can get rid of the to data table call, which is just a projection onto a data table, by using a binding source and directly map to this thing right here. So notice we've taken some student objects, that are nothing like uh, invoices. We projected it onto, these are called anonymous types. We've generated a new invoice report. We've data table ified the actual anonymous types, set the report data source, and we get this awesome report. Okay, Amanda, I am going to stop there and take any questions. Hey Seth, so um, from Carlos, this was a while back. Can I uh, can I make a report from scratch by coding? Yes, I would not suggest it though, <laughs> because uh, there's two things you need to be careful of. First is a performance issue. We've really optimized this this thing. For example, if you if you build a report by creating a new label for every row, you're going to blow up stuff, right? You don't want to do that. So there's a certain way to do it, but yes. Uh, if you go to the documentation, you can see our object model. The, the essence of it is that you're literally creating bricks. So imagine you're building a wall, and that wall is your report. So you have bricks that you put into it, and there's certain kinds of bricks. For example, you can put a label inside a brick, so on and so forth. Go on to the tutorial and see that. All right, any other questions, Amanda? By the way, I will. I will. If you if you send me an email, I'm I'm happy to maybe do a tutorial on it. Maybe this is like a 400 level report webinar I'd love to do. All right, any other questions, Amanda? Yeah, this one was from the very beginning. I think it's a general reporting. Uh, talking about reporting in an XAF application, I have a non-persistent XP collection of some objects in my class. I fill the collections for custom reasons in my controller. 
whatever I do, it doesn't appear in my report, even in report preview. Is there any way to fix this, or is it by design? Okay, so I'd have to see this particular case, because XAF is a different animal, because there's a lot of stuff going on in the background. Now, the questions that I have for this is, number one, when you're designing the report, if there is no data inside of the XP collection when you're designing, it's just using it almost as if it was the data source schema, right? Notice that it's just using the objects and querying them to find out what the shape of the data is, but it doesn't know about the data itself. So my concern is if it's not showing it when you do a real preview, like for example this real preview, that's a concern and we need to look into it. If it's not showing it on the design preview, then that's a little bit different problem. But yeah, send me an email and I'm happy to, to help you out with that. It's a good question. All right, Amanda, any other questions? All right. Nope, that is all the questions. Well, let me finish off by saying these are what we call projections. This is a projection. I, I didn't get a chance to, to say that, but this, this is the projection. We're projecting students onto invoices. Uh, we could get even more fancier and do hierarchical projections where we project, where we project hierarchical data into another hierarchy. And so there's some really cool stuff you can do with this. Um, yeah. Uh, hopefully you'll try. I'm, I'm excited to see what you try. All right. Anything else, Amanda? <laughs> um, yeah, no more questions, but I have a whole bunch of stuff coming up this week to talk about. Oh, hold on. yeah. Bring Just it. Just kidding. Just kidding. Robert's getting one in here under the wire. Awesome. Let's see. I typically build all my data for reports in custom classes. What's the most efficient way to work with these in design mode of reports? Robert, you're a man after my heart. I typically build all my data for reports and custom classes as well because I feel that that is the best way to separate or be data agnostic. Uh, so the question is, what's the most efficient way to work with these in the design mode of reports? So if you're talking about design mode inside of Visual Studio, I will show you that right now. So let me go to the custom, well, let me add a new report. So we're going to say add new item. <clears throat> We're going to go to uh, reports, reporting. Let's call this a custom, custom, a C report. And the idea when you have objects is you need to, well, first off, I totally spaced this, but there is something called a binding source that's in form, in the forms namespace. So, so it's just, uh, where is it? Hello. Okay, here, form. Forms. Very good. So first of all, you need this reference because we use a binding source. Second, when you go to the data source, when you add the project data source, use object. Right? Because it binds directly to that. So I'll hit next. Then we go to reports. We're going to use invoice and I'll hit finish. Oakley to Oakley, look what we got here. Same thing we had before. So now when I go to form1.cs and I call it the C report, which is a custom report, now I don't need to do this to data table nonsense. I don't think so. I might have to materialize it, but I'm not sure. See? Boom. Right, notice that now I don't have this data table nonsense that I have to worry about before. And this is what I want to show you. I guess I should have just done it really fast, right? We're doing a projection onto an anonymous type onto a report that has a binding source set to an object. Right? Notice that what happens when you do that is you create this thingamajigger called a data source. And this data source is just a generic object data source generated by Visual Studio. So this is what you want to do. Uh, yeah, uh, Robert's like, this is so much easier than building an XSD file just to get the field this popular. It surely is, but Robert, some people have a purist approach, and they're like, but wait, man, I don't want to use the Windows Forms assembly in my project. And what I say to them is, okay, I don't mind either. Uh, 
I don't mind. If you don't want to use the Windows Forms namespace, then feel free to use the XML data source, right? And that's the that's the general approach. So yeah, Robert, you are absolutely two thousand million percent right. Notice that. In fact, I did it so fast, people might not even seen the screen change. I just all I did is I created a binding source. You can do the, the other thing is you can go to uh, down here to this doohickey right here, the binding source. Drag that puppy on, and on the binding source, you can actually choose. Oops, you can actually choose a data source. Right? You can choose an object. Right? So it's pretty cool. Uh, I like this too, Robert. To be honest with you, long live lay Windows Forms. Right. Any other questions, Amanda? Nope, that's everything. Cool. So let me do a little recap. We talked about data, how to play with it on the report, how to aggregate it, how to turn flat data into fat data. That's P H A T for those that were born after. <laughs> when was that cool? When was it cool to say that, Amanda? Uh, you wouldn't know. You're like 19, right? Yeah. I'm 19. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we we took took flat data and made it interesting. Uh, then we use parameters as data, you know, to actually show on the report and also to shape the data. We shape the data on the client side with the filter string, on the server side with the queries on the table adapters. Then we went ahead and started playing around with, well, what if we don't have the data source a priori? Then we can shape our own field list by creating an XML data source. And we created our own XSD, which was pretty simple. Then what we did is I showed you how to bind custom objects to it by creating our own extension methods that takes an I enumerable of anything and converts it to a data table. And then because Robert was so awesome and wanted to ask this question, I showed you how to use the binding source to do the same thing and shorten up a bit our code. Let me go there so you can see that, the shortened version of it. Now, just because I did it in Windows Form does not mean you can't do this in any other environment. The idea is let's swap data, let's swap present presentation, and we're we'll, we're still hunky dory. In other words, we're still happy. And so that's the mantra. We have data, we have uh, uh, we have the data, we have the layout, which is what what we didn't really spend a lot of time on, and the presentation. Today was data centric. So again, this works with the F4, with anything, anything you can project into, it works. So any other questions before we wrap up? And if there isn't, I turn the time over to Amanda. Thanks for watching. All right, thank you so much, Seth. All right, everybody, so we have a whole lineup of webinars that are currently posted throughout October. Check them out and register at devexpress.com slash webinars. Uh, coming up this week, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Extra Reports in Business, Streamlining the Design Time Experience with Ryan Hatch of Dynamic Benefit Systems. Report writing can be challenging. Let us show you how we enabled our business experts to design the reports they really wanted themselves. No more code behind. We show you how to cleanly separate report coding from report designing into two different tasks. Take full advantage of the end user report designer, including full design time support for end level sub-reports, and we'll show you how extra reports can make the difference for your organization. Well, tomorrow. I, yes. I just got excited. Holy cow. <laughs> Whoa. This is like a real real life like person that does these things for a job. So yes. it's not just me pontificating. It's gonna be cool. I'm really excited. <laughs> and then at noon tomorrow, our weekly Code Rush feature workshop with Mark Miller and Rory Becker. Every Wednesday, Mark and Rory build a new feature for Visual Studio using Code Rush and the DX Core. Uh, the features are selected based on your request, and they are built live right before your eyes. And then Thursday, September 22nd at 10 a.m., Chris G. Williams is back with more on Windows Phone 7, consuming web-based services from Windows Phone apps and games. And also on Thursday at noon Pacific Standard Time, you don't want to miss our Build Conference Recap and Preview of What's New in 11.2 with the entire DevExpress team. So that one... Uh, you should really join us for. So again, if you missed anything from this webinar or you want to review any previous webinars or check out hundreds of online product tutorials, visit us on the DevExpress channel at tv.devexpress.com. Um, and all those webinars, again, are listed at devexpress.com slash webinars. Again, thanks so much to Seth. Thank you all for joining us, and thanks for choosing DevExpress. <laughs>